But before we go to a coffee break, we have another speaker who is from, I guess it's a social network if you're investing or managing billions. It's called Trusted Insight. It's a social marketplace for institutional investments founded in 2010, based in New York. Over here to talk to you, Alex Bangash. Hi everyone, um, I'd like to uh, thank Beko Capital for making this possible and inviting us here. I'm uh, real inspired when I stand here before you. Um, and uh, I want to tell you a little about, you've been hearing about uh, disruption, um, and I want to take a moment and have you think about uh, how is it how is it that we invest in di disruption? And kind of what are our thought processes? And then how is the process, the process of investing in disruption, itself being disrupted by those same elements that are disrupting traditional industries? So in essence, how is it that venture capital is, disrupt, is being disrupted, both in terms of models of uh, investment as well as new geographies and new opportunities. Um, before I begin, uh, I do want to uh, tell you a little about what is it that we do. Uh, you heard David Rowan mention that we are a social network. In fact, yes, that is what uh, we started as, but what we would explain ourselves today is that we're actually a full stack institutional asset management. And what you see at the very top of Trusted Insight is kind of a LinkedIn for LPs. But that is the, that is the tip of the iceberg. That's what is providing us proprietary training data sets. Just like autonomous driving is being built by unsupervised um, neural networks which are, which, are not, which are trained by observing drivers, our neural nets are being trained by watching LPs and VCs invest. And we also have a fund, a fund, and a fund. And we are building autonomous portfolios. So let me talk about the golden age of, um, age of venture capital. And I think uh, Danny alluded to how traditional um, uh, industries were being disrupted. And I think all of you are here because in some sense you agree with this premise. The next big company in every traditional field is going to be a technology company. Uh, <clears throat> The question, however, is how will we find it? How, how will we, as investors, either as LPs or as, it, or as VCs, find this next big company disrupting a traditional, um, uh, traditional industry? And it is my firm belief, it is my conviction that these things are going, are going to come not by chasing brands and logos, but these things are going to come from the margins. These are going to be the things that people will joke about. Today, we are talking about uh, blockchain and Bitcoin, and I remember 
on YC Demo Day, 2012. I am with my, um, one of the managers that I have the privilege to work on, work with Gary Tan, and he's introducing me to Brian Armstrong, the founder of Coinbase. And, and I was like, Gary, how could you invest in this company? This is, um, you know, I, I could not get my head around it. This was building an ex exchange for Bitcoin at that point. I think Bitcoin was $12 or $6. In, in fact, famously, there is the two pizza, two pizza rule. It's probably worth 60 million, 50 million right now, but somebody bought two pizzas um, for Bitcoins in, in 2011, which would now be worth $25 million. <clears throat> so, coming back to the different uh, <clears throat> waves of the disruption. Today, as most of you um, know, we are in the machine learning wave. Uh, but that has start, started with, you know, just like um, in the past, it used to be in the, in, the, in, the, um, uh, in the early 50s when William Shockley left Bell Labs and joined, uh, came to um, uh, came to um, Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley was as new as, as Dubai is, or uh, the MENA region is, and he sparked that um, uh, thing with, uh, with his traitorous eight, which, led, which then led to companies like Intel with Bob Noyce and Gordon Moore uh, um, and, uh, and others. And in the, in the, in the uh, 70s, it was the, the computing wave. In the 80s, it was the personal computing wave. In the 90s, it was the web wave. And as, as it's been uh, referred to, we are living in the machine learning wave today. <clears throat> and maybe, maybe the next wave, the next wave will be the blockchain wave. But one key point to understand is sometimes these waves are not coming from just the places that you would expect, expect them to. The blockchain, one of the most important companies in blockchain, Ethereum, in fact, those of you who are thinking of buying Bitcoin today, well, uh, keep in mind that Bitcoin is not quantum computing safe. So those of you who have invested in quantum computing, might find their Bitcoin being uh, worthless due to advances in, uh, in quantum computing. Whereas the next, the, the, um, <clears throat> the, the thing that is uh, a quantum computing safe, Ethereum, was actually not founded in, in Silicon Valley, but it was actually founded by a Russian immigrant in, uh, um, in, in Canada, a 19-year-old. So, Innovation will come from places where we don't see. And so what, what is actually happening with uh, the disruption of venture capital? And how is that going to drive returns? So it's my contention that actually this is going to happen, that is this is happening in new, new, with new models and new geographies. So those of you who have invested in venture capital, um, if you had asked um, uh, uh, yourself maybe in 2000, uh, 2005, what were the best VCs to invest in? You know, so of course, Kleiner Perkins would be at the top, Sequoia would be, would be there, and there would be other managers like <coughs> Northbridge and, and more David Ao, uh, very few people, very few people would, would put the names uh, that you see, uh, house, household names in investing uh, up there. But uh, in reality, um, we had a completely different set of folks that uh, emerged as being the best investors. And I had the privilege of working with all four of these things at the very beginning. And actually, these things were 
very contrarian. So in some sense, when I started working with, um, found, uh, with Peter Thiel, and I know he recently gave a, a talk in, in Saudi um, la last week. So, uh, you know, Peter, it was, very, it was very contrarian to be backing Peter Thiel in 2005 or 2006. Um, well, most investors would come up to me and say, Alex, well, how, how come we're backing Peter? He just invested in a social network called Facebook. Facebook has 10 million users and has no revenue, whereas, um, um, whereas MySpace has 65 million users and is profitable. And it was things that peop, you know, we, we just saw things like AI and um, uh, 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 space and robotics, things that are in vogue today. When, when most of these folks invested in them, <clears throat> it was in fact not in vogue. In fact, it was re really contrarian, and you can probably remember jokes about inve being investing in space, investing in robotics. I remember in 2010 visiting with Demis Hassabis, who is the founder of uh, DeepMind, and Founders Fund had first invested in them. And there was a lot of, um, you know, most investors thought, wow, are we ever going to see our money back from something like artificial, artificial intelligence? Um, and today, it's become a big theme. So the point of the matter is, <clears throat> the, things, the things that have, big things have small, small beginnings. And, and it's, not, it's not the traditional logos uh, that, will, that will help you uh, uh, find the, the, the best returns. It is actually uh, these, these funds that are act, uh, disrupting the very nature of, uh, in, nature of investing. And so with that in mind, I also want to give you a sense of the order of magnitude. So while brand names today, um, the very best of them are kind of generating 10, 10 times um, the multiple for their investors. These newer models, and these newer models are um, accelerators, incubators, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and micro angels, they are, they are the very best of those are actually generating 100 times the return. And, you know, how is that possible? You would say, well, how is that possible that these newer models are able to do things that the existing models are not um, uh, able to? And I think the, the answer lies into the very same things that we were s seeing. So there's just like traditional industries and incumbents, a uh, Hilton or a... Uh, um, uh, <clears throat> or a Hyatt cannot uh, adapt and do what an Airbnb is doing. It's the same way that traditional venture funds are not able to reinvent themselves into a, a Y Combinator or an angel list or a lowercase. <clears throat> and all of this has to do with a couple, this is motherhood and apple pie, but it's really important to understand that all of this has to do with this democratization of innovation. Today, a company can be started anywhere. The cost of starting a technology company has come down around, around 2005 due to open source and due to um, <clears throat> Uh, 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 due, due to open source and cloud computing, that cost has co come down to tens of thousands of dollars. Before, it used to be tens of millions of dollars. <clears throat> and with that in mind, now innovation, global companies can come out of anywhere. They can come out of uh, uh, in India, um, just like um, Zoho is a, is a decacon now. It's doing close to a billion dollars in revenue. It's completely bootstrapped. It's a global company. <clears throat> uh, similarly, um, as I mentioned, some of the best AI is now coming from Canada. It's not coming from Silicon, Silicon Valley. And so with the, same, with the same mindset, I think we're going to see a lot more innovation from regions like MENA, 
We're going to see um, Africa, Southeast Asia, um, and as well as um, and as well as um, uh, uh, South America. <clears throat> so this is this is something to keep in mind. What we've seen. <clears throat> As you look, at, look to your portfolios and you look to back, back manager and you say, okay, you get excited, you hear all these talks, and you go back and you say, look, I want to put more of my capital into venture. I want to get, get this innovation. As I said, that innovation that you're trying to, to get uh, by investing in traditional funds, by investing in traditional regions, you're actually not going to get venture capital type of returns. You're going to get private equity returns. Why? Because venture capital itself has been disrupted. And, and the traditional venture funds are like private equity funds. They are no longer giving opportunity or investing at the earliest, sta at the earliest stages. Um, <clears throat> Those of you who are um, Andreessen uh, investors, as you know, Mark Andreessen has his annual meeting in Las Vegas every year. So this, this week, it, the, it, now it's, it's coming up, but last year he told his LPs, he said, we are still investing in Series A, but we are actually the fifth round of investment. So the point, the point being that there are more and more uh, investors that are now displacing the traditional series A and B, which are looking more like private equity. And those things are incubators, pre-incubators, accelerators, and post-accelerators. At Trusted Insight, in our, in our fund of fund, we have actually invested in five, five incubators. Uh, we have invested in multiple accelerators. We were first first investor with, with Y Combinator. And I'm really proud to say that I was one of the first investors to invest in South, um, um, in South America uh, with our friends from Monashis. And I was the first investor to invest in, 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 um, in uh, uh, in India uh, with, with, uh, with Excel India, Nexus, and others. And I'm really looking forward to being a backer of uh, you know, an amazing fund like Beko in, in this region, which I'm so excited about. <clears throat> so what are these trends allowing folks to do? Why is, how is it that this is, uh, this is uh, disrupting venture, ca venture capital? So one of the things that you've probably seen, for instance, from Garrett Camp, Uber, Uber was an incubated company. Twitter and, uh, was an incubated company. Uh, so th as the cost of starting companies goes down, now entrepreneurs can set up multiple companies and fund multiple companies at the same time. Do just like, just like in a product company, you can do A-B testing for, uh, for features now they can A-B test for businesses, and they can launch the business that is most successful. And then they can put all of their resources on those, on those businesses. <clears throat> As I said, this is just one example. So, uh, so, so you know, we will probably see a lot more of, of incubators, a lot more of accelerators, but I have to tell you one thing. Just as I said that it, it does not make sense to invest in logos and, and things, it also, the, 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 there are new versions of these coming every, um, every so often. And what we've seen is that the best, um, that the best of, of these, uh, these incubators, they themselves are not a copy of something else. We're fortunate to be uh, invested in one of the best accelerators in Europe, and they look nothing like what is um, like YC. Uh, we're also in, uh, uh, in, invested with Sasser. Sasser itself is very different than, than uh, uh, the, uh, say, Y Combinator or this other incubator. So 
so in every region, within every sector, uh, you know, the, 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 the disruptive thing looks nothing like what was in the past. It is actually um, something that's completely different. And so, wh well, why am I belaboring this point of um, uh, 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 venture capital? Um, it's because in the past, the preeminent, the preeminent dominant leader in every industry used to be a brand. So it was a Nordstrom's or a, or a Sears or a JCPenney. And then with the advent of internet, um, companies could build a platform and, and create, create something with network effects. Those network effects would become a force multiplier. The same thing now is happening in venture capital. So in venture capital, we are seeing that the best funds no longer look like a Sears uh, or an Am <coughs> Sears or a JCPenney. They look like an Amazon. The best funds have network effects. And so, so when we look at when we look to find the best funds, or when we advise funds to build something substantive, we're not only looking at track record, but we're looking at how they build their platform, how they deliver services at scale, and then, then are a beneficiary of the network effects um, that, they, that they generate. So today, the strongest venture fund on the planet is not Sequoia or Benchmark. The strongest venture fund is YC. And YC was, you know, just 12 years ago, YC didn't exist. It was a ragtag of 18 um, uh, college uh, dropouts and in, uh, in college students that Paul Graham had put together. The same thing is now going to happen somewhere Somewhere in Abu Dhabi, somewhere in Istanbul, um, in, in Jakarta, there's a ragtag of students getting together with, with some fund that will now be, uh, lay claim to be the dominant fund in the next decade. And it's that, that fund that we aspire to find. <clears throat> <clears throat> Clearly, I don't need to um, <clears throat> tell you this, but Silicon Valley is no longer uh, <clears throat> the, the center of, of, the, uh, of the universe. In fact, just last, last quarter, New York had more capital invested than San Francisco. It is true, it is true that in, in San Francisco and Silicon Valley, uh, there are some best practices, there are some ways of building companies, of hacking growth, of, uh, mm, uh, of venture capital that can be then exported um, elsewhere, uh, but it is becoming very clear <clears throat> that some of, the, some of the best opportunities now um, are not in deploying those same things in, in San Francisco, or in a uh, thing, but, but, but uh, in other geographies um, and in other sectors. With, with that, I'd like to uh, thank you um, for inviting me to speak, um, and um, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions or uh, make myself available if you have any.